Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin PF, and on today's episode, we've got something a little bit different to the kind of stuff I normally cover. But actually, when you think about it, it's not so different after all. Now, today on the table, I've got the Black Mountain number BM number one excellence, this is called. I'll be be very surprised if any of you have actually heard of this unless you're from France. You can get this pretty widely in France. I picked this up in uh, an airport, I think Toulouse, and I've got the three. This is the uh, the BM1, the BM2, and the Fume, which is the smoky version. Uh, and I picked these up on a random. I just saw them. They uh, look like they're French whiskey, so I picked them up, thought I would give them a review, and this is going to be the first one of that. Now, this is the uh, their kind of entry-level whiskey right now. We'll go into a little bit more about what they're doing in a moment. It's presented at 42%, which is, you know, it's okay, it's okay. Don't know anything about colour, but again, as we go to go through in a minute, I'll tell you a little bit more about what this liquid is. Uh, and it's likely they do, but, you know, it's quite pale anyway, so it really doesn't matter regardless. Now, the Black Mountain Whiskey. This is not French whiskey. Technically speaking, this is Scotch, but obviously meeting the rules of the SWA, rebottling Scottish whiskey or bottling anything that, that was made in Scotland is no longer Scotch, it has to be in Scotland. What these guys are doing right now, while they're building the distillery, I'm not sure if they've built, they've built that yet, I think they must have by now and they must be producing, but this is sourced whiskey from Scotland, brought over to France in their casks, then it's uh, remarried, blended together, uh, and it's put in another cask that's had some French spirit in it. It's not French whiskey, it's just an undisclosed French spirit. Then they marry that together for six months and produce this. Now, I don't often go looking at websites for more information. I, I tend to just have a click around the internet, see what uh, other people have said, see what the official uh, shops have been saying. So I don't tend to go to the actual official websites full of marketing stuff but because this is so obscure for a worldwide audience for for you guys watching this i had to go to their website because really it's unavoidable they have a few bits of information that let you know just a touch of things if you if you read it between the lines almost obviously they're they're quite clear about this has all been sourced from scotland but they mention that uh, it, the original malt, the original, I shouldn't even say malt to be fair, the original whiskey is combined and blended into their, their other cask. It's combined with much older Scottish whiskies, they say, that has a much higher malt proportion. That's their specific wording they're using on the website. So we can only assume that the bulk of this is a very high grain percentage very little malt and they say that there's some slightly more aged things in here to round it off with a little bit higher of malt percentage but we're going into this knowing full well it's probably going to be a lot of youthful grain now the thing i have to say about this before we get into the nose is pricing um, obviously i did not buy this in the uk it's not available in the uk it's almost exclusively available in france apart from one shop in canada in alberta of all places i don't know why uh, I imagine that when they start producing their own liquid, they'll start pushing this out to the world. And uh, this is the first version of it. So I'm going to get into the nose now and see what we've got. But I don't know, the prices I found were about 50 euros, about 45 pounds, which seems a little excessive to me. But we'll see. Let's have a go on the nose. Now, as expected, very grainy. It's got some vanilla, some honeys that you would expect from kind of any kind of bog standard Scottish whiskey. Those kind of ex-bourbon barrels come into play. But for me, there's an unavoidable astringency to it. It's quite got quite a sour nose, a bit of a chemical nature to it. I often get these kind of noses on really youthful grain. If you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you'll see that I've covered some really youthful grain, like going almost Hay Club Clubman style, but excessively aged grain. I tried some sort of uh, late 20 year olds and I was lucky enough to even try a 58 year old grain from North British. Do go and check those videos out. But uh, there's something about grain that if it isn't aged for long enough or at least in a certain way that mimics that age, it just doesn't taste that great. But age grain for 25 years, as you would any other whiskey in Scotland, 
and something special happens and it just becomes this amazing biscuity, buttery, creamy awesomeness. But before that kind of real age comes in, we get this youthful astringency, I find anyway, which is what makes things like um, Johnny Walker Red Label, for instance, you know, it's it, that's almost entirely grain, I should imagine, with a little bit of malt to round it off. And it just brings it all together in a cheap package. And that's kind of what I think we've got in the glass here, but with an elevated price for all the messing about that's had to go on to get this done. So anyway, onto the palette, I should digress. Now the, the palette's a bit interesting because while you're swishing it about, it's got some really nice peppery flavors to it. It's a little watery for my liking. It's, uh, there isn't really a hell of a lot in terms of actual flavour going on, but I don't mind that pepperiness, that kind of lively tongue flavour. It's really nice, but when you swallow and that pepperiness disappears, what it leaves behind is this like chemical bittery flavour that extends through into the finish that I'm not really a huge fan of. The finish goes on and on and on, but it's very sour. Like Right now I've got this kind of sour feeling that makes me want to go back for another drink but i have to say not of this you know uh, you're getting that kind of very very quick fulfilling pepperiness that just disappears completely now i'm glad to have covered something like this because it's interesting to see what people are doing with whiskey around the world importing it and doing their own thing i mean even japanese whiskey we all know how popular that is right now, although I have to say I think that's dropping off a little bit now because there are so many new distilleries out there that are importing not only Scottish barley, but actually Scottish whiskey as well, blending it in with their own and then selling it for inflated prices to kind of keep on with that demand that's happening for Japanese whiskey right now. Bit of a shame and you've got to watch out what you're doing with whiskey, especially from Japan and all sorts. If it's an unknown entity, you really need to do your research and check it out beforehand. Same with this. Now, I haven't tried the other two. I'm looking forward to trying the Fume. They, they are all sourced from uh, Scotland, one way or the other, and they've got some different things happening with them. The next one on is called the uh, BM2 Premium, which I think has a much higher percentage of malt whiskey instead of just grain whiskey. Probably going to enjoy that a bit more, but I haven't tried it yet, so I'll do a video probably in a few months' time. Everyone would have forgotten about this by then. But I have to say, uh, not a great entry for for their brand, in my opinion. I'm glad I've picked up the other two, because if I'd have just picked up this one, I don't think I'd be reaching for the other ones anytime soon. But I have to say, you know, they're, they're trying to bring something out. You know, if this was a bit cheaper, I could definitely recommend it. £45 is an absolute no-go from me. But, you know, if this was locally sourced i don't know what you pay for this in france for instance but if you were finding a bottle of it on your shelf for about sort of 25 pounds i don't think that would be that bad still think there's better whiskies out there for that price but i've got to be honest about these things looking forward to trying more of their stuff for sure to see if uh, the the kind of quality increases a little bit but for me not really a huge fan of that one i have to say